Hello, hello, hello. My name is Daryl. I'm a designer from Blotty Lab. In this video, we are going to be making this fake 3D Rubik's Cube. And we're going to do everything entirely inside of Blotty Lab, from design down to its animation. And this asset might look complicated, but actually it's pretty simple. There's only two properties that's being animated in here. And yeah, with that being said, let's actually get started. So to get started, I'm just pause this animation and I'm going to press my F key so that I could enable my artboard or my artboard tool or you could access the artboard tool over here together alongside with your other drawing tools to so artboard right there and i'm just going to type in the value that i want for my artboard and i want it to be a thousand by a thousand so then i'm going to turn on the background and change the background to black there we go now i'm going to press r i'm just close this one quickly i'm pressing r and i'm just going to draw my square I'll lock in the proportion and type in the value that I want. 100 by 100. I'm going to quickly center it. And to mimic a Rubik's Cube, let's duplicate the square right here. So what we could do is we could hold Option or Alt if you're Windows. Option and Shift and drag it like so. Option and Shift. Duplicate that one. Lovely. And now what we're going to do is let's group all the squares. And let's call this one our first side. Lovely. So this one is our first side and let's change the colors for it quickly so that we can mimic a Rubik's Cube and change it to that one. Lovely, lovely. And since a cube has multiple sides, let's duplicate this first side and call it other side. Other side right here. And as for the other side, let's change the colors. Other side right here, it's this. And it goes like white and back to maybe this color, this color, that color right there. All right, that looks good. So now we got two different sides. We got the other side and the first side right here. Cool. So what we're going to do next is let's duplicate. No, let's group all the elements in here and call it row. Lovely. Cool. So let's expand our row. And what we want to do next is we want to change the anchor point of our other side to right center so that anything that we change is going to start from right center. And same thing for the first side. We're going to change the anchor point to the left center. Lovely. And before we actually do anything else, let's change the other side since we don't want it to be in view just yet. Let's change the scale to zero. There we go. And this right here is basically our design setup. This is one row of the cube. And at this point, we're pretty much good to go into animating it. Lovely. So in animation mode, again, there's only one simple rule inside of Lots Lab. Anything that you change in a specific point in time will be added as a keyframe. And what's a keyframe? A keyframe is basically your way of saying, at this point in time, I want it to happen like this. So for example, at 1.52 or at 1.20, I want it to, I want the first side to rotate like this. And there we go. We have our animation. If we play this out, you got the animation. Now, if, if we expand it, you see the property that's being animated together there alongside with its keyframes. And there you go. That's how you animate things inside Lots of Love. Super simple. So I'm just remove that animation. And now let's do the actual animation. So question is, how do we simulate a 3D rotation in a 2D space? Well, we can think of it like this. We have two different layers representing two sides of the cube. And when the cube rotates, one side starts to shrink as if it's turning away from you while the other side starts to grow as if it's coming into view. And in that way, we're giving an illusion of a 3D rotation, even though we're in a 2D space. So it shrinks while the other one grows. So for that one, we're basically animating the scale. So for our first side at 0 0.4, we want it to be out of view. So we turn it to zero and we want to introduce the other side at the same point in time and change it change the scale to 100 so that we have an animation like this. And this right here is our basic switch, but it doesn't seem that we're switching. So let's emphasize the switch a little bit more. And I'm going to select the row and at 0 0.2. I'm going to scale it up to 1.25, no, 125. And then what I'm going to do is that at 0 0.4, I want to go back to 100%. All right, there we go. And let's play that back. <laughs> Lovely. We have our very basic rotation. Cool. 
So I'm just going to duplicate the keyframes for it so that it rotates back to its original um, rotation at 0 0.8, 0 0.2. Let's put it at one second and zero. Right now, I'm just duplicating the keyframes, holding option and dragging the keyframes to the point in time where I want them to be or alt it during windows. Lovely. Now I'm just going to change the um, ease in quickly. This one's natural, natural. Let's change everything to natural. Cool. All right. This is our animation. This is the very concept of our animation. At this point in time, we don't need to animate anything. So I'm going to just turn, up, turn off animate mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the rows. Duplicate that one. I'm holding option shift to duplicate them or alt shift if you're in Windows. And if we play them back, lovely. Now, before anything else, I'll just name everything and reorder them based on their order. So this one's top, this one's bottom, and that one at last. Oops, sorry. There we go. Oops, sorry. Keep doing that. Let's do it the other way around in this one center. Lovely. And now, as you can see, they're basically all rotating the same direction. So we don't want that. So what we could do is we could just actually flip the entire thing the other way around. And same thing for the top row. Let's flip the entire thing the other way around. So we have it like this. Cool. And now let's just change the timing for them. So for the top, we no. Let's start. It. Let's start with the bottom one. So the bottom one we wanted to animate first. So let's keep it as is. As for the center, we wanted this, the animation to start at 0.1. And as for the top, we wanted to start at 0.2. So we have this. All right, cool. And now what we could do is we could actually add more depth to this one. So let's group all the rows and call this group cube. This is our cube. And to add more depth, let's add one more rotation to it. So let's rotate it by 90. And let's expand it and adjust the keyframes for rotation. And if we play this one out, there we go. Lovely. So I'm going to just duplicate this keyframe right here so that we could go back to its original rotation. There we go. If we play that, lovely. I'm just going to adjust the easing. I'm going to do a bounce out for this and a bounce out for this one as well. And if we play that one out, haha. All right, cool. So I'm just going to adjust the entire duration now to two seconds and move the entire duration maybe here. Lovely. At this point, the only thing left to do is just to adjust the colors because we're entirely done with the animation. Cool. So I'm going to turn off anime mode and adjust the colors. Da -da 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 -da. Colors of this part. All right, cool. Change it to that one. This one. Oh, no, this one. Maybe maybe pink. Let's do purple. Purple looks good. That one right there. OK, cool. And now for this other side, let's have a purple at the middle. And yellow on the other end. Mm, this one right here, let's change it to yellow as well. All right, cool. So if we play this one out, aha, uh -huh. now we have our Rubik's cube. But before we actually like end the entire thing, Let's duplicate it and let's add a bit of a glow to it. Let's call this bloom effect. And inside of a bloom effect, we could add a blur and change the blur radius or blur amount to about maybe 90 and change the blending mode to overlay. Oops, change the blending mode to overlay. And there we go. Now, hmm, it seems like it's a bit too much. So I'm going to change. I'm going to tone it down by changing the opacity to maybe 60% looks good. There. Cool. And now if we play this one out, we have our fake 3D Rubik's Cube. And that basically concludes the tutorial for this video. I hope you had fun. It's a pretty simple asset. It looks complicated, but it's super simple. Only two properties being animated, just a scale orientation. And that's it. All right, cool. And yeah, I hope you had fun this tutorial. I hope to see you soon in the next tutorial. And of course, the usual YouTube outro. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe and 
hit the notification icon so that you get notified with more tutorials like this. And yeah, I hope to see you soon in the next tutorial. Bye bye and see you soon.